I'd like to clear up the confusion about whether or not there is such a thing as an artificial pancreas. First off, we know we have pancreas transplants and beta cell transplants that work. But an artificial pancreas is different, and it's actually an old term for what we now call AID, or automated insulin delivery. So these systems are not an artificial pancreas, but they are ways to deliver insulin to patients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. We have within the category of AID the hybrid closed-loop systems. So these are systems like the Tandem Control IQ, the Omnipod 5, and the Medtronic 780G that give insulin continuously based on values that are obtained from a sensor. And these systems are really good at basal insulin because when somebody's not eating or overnight, they can keep glucose levels really flat. But these aren't fully closed loop systems because the individual still has to interact with the system and give doses for meals and then adjust doses for exercise. And this is often really tough for patients because people need to give a dose in advance of the meal and they have to figure out how many carbohydrates they're eating. And if they're going to exercise, they have to reduce the insulin that they're given one to two hours before exercise. So this makes spontaneity in life difficult and if done wrong, people can end up being either hypo or hyperglycemic. So it would be really great to have a system that was a fully closed loop system that didn't require that someone do all of these things. So a couple of weeks ago, I went to an NIH conference on automated insulin delivery systems. And for two days, I sat and listened to the most genius people in this field. They're amazing human beings who are really dedicated. And I was hoping for the answer, for the magic, for the reason why we can't do a fully closed loop system and what we're going to do about it. And what I learned is that the limit, and I guess I should have realized this, is that we're giving insulin subcutaneously. And subcutaneously delivered insulin has a problem, which is that you give it, it works with however long it takes it to work, but then it takes it four to six hours to wear off. So whatever algorithms you use for giving insulin as glucose levels are going up, for whatever wristband you can have someone wear to see if they're eating or not eating, for anything you do to help reduce the postprandial rise, you then have to figure that there is no break. Basically, you can't get rid of the insulin once it's been given, and glucose levels will fall if the insulin is stacked too much in advance or with the increase of the glucose levels with the meal. And somebody said, which I think is really apt, it's like an engineer trying to design a car with only a gas pedal and no brake. And I think that's what makes all of this very hard. And we put a lot of the onus on the user of the system to do a lot of things right. The system does things for the patient, but it isn't enough. It is not a fully closed loop system. Now, there are some really cool things on the horizon that will help people do better. There is the tide pool loop algorithm that's been approved and should be ready to be used in the not too distant future. But there's also a new pump. Beta Bionics has been working on developing an insulin pump. And originally it was going to be insulin and glucagon together, and it will be in the future. But right now, what's up for approval is the insulin alone pump. And the reason this pump stands out from all others is because the user basically is not allowed to fidget with it. When you start someone on the pump, you put in their weight, and then you choose one of three different target ranges, and then the pump just works. And the user can put in if they're eating, but they only have three choices. They're eating a usual amount, more than usual or less than usual. There's no numbers that the user puts in here, which I think makes this a spectacular tool for my patients in my East LA under-resourced setting who really have trouble with those sort of numeracy skills. The system is going to get people's time and range probably to 65 to 70%. So for people who have goals that are tighter than that, who prefer to work with their own insulin to try to reach a time and range of 80 to 90%, this isn't the system for them. And I have many of those patients who were very good at adjusting their own insulin and doing it on their own. But this is for people who don't 
want to or can't make those adjustments, whose time and range is much lower, who perhaps are transitioning for multiple daily insulin injections, or for adolescents, for instance. There's a whole group of people where I think this kind of system will really be a relief. It will help take away some of the burden. They do have to think about such things as changing the infusion set, about charging the pump, about dealing with times when their glucose levels are persistently high. They're still troubleshooting. It's still a pump. But I think it's going to be another option for our patients, along with the existing options. And I couldn't be more excited about the progress that is being made in this field. But don't use the term artificial pancreas. That's not what we're giving patients. We're giving them automated insulin delivery systems. And I think we need to encourage all of our patients with type 1 diabetes who have access to these systems to use them to improve their control if it's the right system for them. <laughs>